Hi, I'm Liz Perfetti, and this is The Neighborhood Potter. Today, we have a special treat. I have a visitor with me, my friend Mally Weber, from Hollowell Clayworks in Hollowell, Maine. And we're going to be talking about the work that she does up there in Hollowell, and as far as her teaching and her pottery making, but also she does something really different that I ha don't know much about, and she's going to teach us all about called clay field work. It's a form of art therapy that using clay and she has a lot of training and specialty in it and I'm really excited to learn about it. And this is Mally and um, I'm going to, I would like Mally to tell me a little bit about herself, maybe how she got involved in clay to start with. Um, we always joke that potters have a bit of an origin story, how you got hooked into clay. So Mally, can you tell me about yourself and how you started? Sure. Um, I started my clay career kind of late, I feel like. I, um, I had never touched clay, like as a child. I didn't have many art classes or anything like that. So when I went off to college, I was trying to decide what kind of classes I wanted to take. And I saw ceramics and I thought, oh, that would be interesting. I think I might, you know, I think I might try it. And so I walked into the classroom, um, met my professor, and uh, he was fantastic. Like, like the minute I touched the clay, there was something about it that was perfect for me, mm. that was natural, that it just felt like, oh, like where have you been all my life? <laughs> you know, that kind of like in love mm -hmm. feeling. And do you still feel that way about clay now? Absolutely. <laughs> and how long has it been? I have built my life around this stuff. <laughs> how long has that been? Oh, gosh, I was 18, so yeah, yeah. a long time, so 30-something yeah. like years ago. Clay has that way about it. Yeah. So you proceeded to follow that path? I did, I did, and I didn't, uh, I didn't know that's what I wanted to do. So I went through college, and I took every clay class that I possibly could, um, but I never really switched my major to ceramics. I'm, I don't know why, what that was about. I was an English major. I thought that would be more practical for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but then I just, um, I could never get enough of it. Like I just continued working in clay. I always had like a little corner in my um, room where I, I set up a little studio, even if it was a little table and you know just a little piece of clay and so <laughs> I just continued as much as I could and I had never learned how to throw on the wheel in college either it was all hand building and sculpture so I really wanted to learn how to throw so after I graduated from college I moved out west for a little while and then I moved back east and that's when I said okay you know I'm gonna learn how to throw I'm gonna be a potter and I was probably 25 at that point is that about when I met you no, no. I, met, I met you like five later, years later. later. Yeah, much later. So, yeah. Because then I moved to Maine. Um, I found Portland Pottery, and I started taking pottery classes with them because I really wanted to, you know, the throwing was what I really wanted to learn. My professor, he wouldn't teach us how to throw, or he, you know, basically <laughs> he said, here's a wheel, go ahead and try, which was hmm. kind of cruel in a way. <laughs> so, so I think, you know, that was really informed my path in a mm -hmm. lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So once I learned how to throw and I was, you know, making work and, you know, trying to do craft fairs and things like that, I got married, moved up to Whitefield, Maine. And Here in Lincoln County. Yep. And <laughs> that's when I met you. Okay, so that's when we met. So yeah. Mally and I connected immediately. Two potters, both just dying to get our hands in clay anywhere we could, making work. And so we met and connected immediately and have been friends. And this is sort of a long path. It's been over 20 years. Yeah. And um, so we're not only passionate clay lovers, we're also wonderful friends. And we've both uh, had children at similar ages and sort of gotten through that. And we've both gone over sort of different humps in our careers trying to find our way. And um, so you were led down a path to pursue further education in your, in your clay work, correct? Yes, yes. Um, so um, I had um, gone through a divorce and I moved into Hollowell and that was when I really had to kind of reinvent myself. So I decided to go back to school. I love school. I didn't love school all the time, but, but I really craved more education around ceramic arts. 
And so I enrolled in Goddard, which was a um, low residency program. And that was fantastic for me. That was and that was for your master's degree? That was for a master's degree in interdisciplinary art. That was a huge turning point for me. I had gone from being a production potter, you know, to really trying to sell wares at craft fairs and things like that, and um, found myself kind of in a, um, kind of really delving into some personal things that I just wasn't thinking about. You know, I was trying to avoid them at all costs, <laughs> really, is what I was doing. Um, but they came up. They just kind of bubbled up for me. And so through my whole entire college program, my master's program, I was digging deep into uh, grief and loss and, and a kind of a hospice work, that kind of thing. And so that kind of changed my trajectory in a huge way. Um, and what brought you into, one of the things that Mally does is, in her own work is that she digs local Maine clay, or as some potters like to call it, wild clay. Um, so she has locally harvested clay in her own work. And I'm curious, when you decided to make that switch to go out and get your own clay, and, and then maybe we can show um, uh, our viewers what you do with that clay, what, the, what that product looks like, and explain how it changes. Oh so, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I think you know I've always been an environmentalist. I you know I like camping and I like being outdoors. And once I had found out that Maine had all of this clay and we weren't using it, it that made no sense to me. I couldn't figure that out. I mean, I know that there's the brick industry, which is huge. And so when I was in grad school, that was one of the things that I really explored. I, I decided that I was going to find clay, dig my own clay and process it and figure out what firing temperature it went to and how to glaze it and all of those things. And so I've had some help along the way with those things, like Watershed for one was incredibly helpful. Um, so that was all part of the process, the main clay. So it's glacial marine clay that we're talking about. And if you're a gardener or a contractor, you, you find it all the time and maybe you're not so happy about it. But as potters, you know, we love that stuff. You know, it's so natural. And so over um, here, we're going to show you that Mally brought in some pots and some of the, you have some of the wet clay right here, actually. Yeah, so this is some of the processed clay. So this is, this is um, glacial marine clay. So this so is what, if you're digging color. in your garden, this is the clay that you see when you're digging up and you think, oh gosh, what am I going to do with this cookie stuff? Or maybe you're playing down on the, Dam your kids are playing down near the Damascotta River or at Pemaquid Beach and you see this clay. This is basically the same clay. It's, it's um, ancient, isn't it ancient marine fossils that have been ground up kind of thing that <laughs> yeah, kind of created it's, that? Yeah, it's essentially, it's, you know, rock flower. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was ground down by the glaciers. Yeah. And so it's filled with organic materials and lots of lots of components that that make it really workable um, so it's fantastic so fantastic and you can see that it has this sort of grayish I think almost greenish tinge to it um, and what you don't realize when you're looking at this clay is that it's full of iron oxide and so when the iron oxide goes into the kiln, it turns to that brick red that you um, think about, you know, all the brick buildings here in New England have, and you probably didn't realize that it started off sort of greenish gray in color. And um, over here, maybe we can take a little walk over and Mally will show you her work that she's done with that clay. Okay, so here you can see there's a picture of me uh, digging clay, and this is in Livermore Falls. Okay. And this was uh, at a friend of mine's property. And again, this was part of my grad school program. I was really searching for sites, and this was a fantastic site for me. So you can see how you find the clay and how wild it is. You know, I often joke and call it free-range organic clay. So um, if you look at the map, then um, on this, this is a glacial um, a geological map by the, the main uh, geological survey. And what they've done is they've kind of broken it down into components of what's under the ground, essentially. And these purple areas all along the coast, these purple and pink areas are glacial marine clay. So here in Lincoln County, it's covered. You know, there's so much clay in this area, which accounts for all of the brick-making factories that we, that we have here. Um, 
Where's so, your site on the map? Do you know? Can you pinpoint it? Oh, it's, I don't know if <laughs> I can not. right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't looked at this in a little while. So, um, but it's, it's amazing how far up the, the clay goes, you know, and this blue line right here, this is really fascinating. This is where the ocean level was. So oh. that was the shore. So if you had a house here, you were on the coast. Wow. <laughs> wow. So you can see how much the ocean has receded. And with that, you know, all the glaciers just kind of like ground everything up. Wow. So there's lots of deposits. And so. then you brought in some of your work that you've made with your clay, locally sourced clay. And um, so one of the things that I love to look at myself as the backs of clay. You have some colorants pushed into this, but do you see the change of color? Yeah. And the beautiful, rich, red-brown coloring that this clay gets. So you can really see it. This is the actual, the little chip right there is the actual clay body, and there's a stain that's on this that makes it a little bit um, darker. But I like to leave little bits in my work so you can see the clay kind of coming through. So, this piece you, again, you can see that she's added colorants in here to get the design and image. But when you turn it over, this is the really pure raw clay fired up to temperature, turning to that nice red, rich reddish orange color. And one of the things I really admire about the clay that Mally has found at her location is that it's really creamy and it doesn't seem to have as many impurities like sand and things like that in it that some of the stuff that when I found at Pemaquid Beach myself it's full of like grit and stuff now people have ways of processing that out um, but her your clay is, comes when she finds she, the stuff she's found has been really quite nice and creamy so I don't know if you want to give a brief like maybe talk about how people process out those that clay and just let people know roughly oh. the yeah sure a lot of times you can um, dry the clay out and dry it out on a screen. Sometimes that mesh, that hard mesh screen that people use for farming, fencing, that kind of stuff. Um, if you dry everything out on that, and then you can just kind of grind and push the clay particles through. You want to be careful. You want to wear a mask because it's dusty and you don't want to breathe it. Um, but you can push that through, and then all of the rocks and twigs and things that are that may be in there is. Um, they just are sort of left on the screen. And then you add water, we call it slaking down the clay, you add water to the clay and then you can run that through a screen as well and then you really get some nice clay that you can work with. So kind of like when I discussed the recycling clay process, it's yeah. sort of a similar thing where we're take, you're taking the dry clay but you also have that added step of sieving out some of the extra chunks and things like that, which my clay, since I buy store-bought, doesn't have in it, or hopefully does not have in it. Um, so next, I'd love it, Mally, if you could show us something about the actual clay field work that you do and yeah. this is where she has is going to tell us how she's tied in her sort of um sort of psychological pieces yeah. um and work the work she's done with um healing emotional healing and clay and this very new sort of subject around how around clay and um so we're going to kind of back over to the table where um your clay field as we jokingly called it a sandbox but it's not a sandbox <laughs> it's kind of like sandbox <laughs> Okay, we're back here at the table, and um, in front of me, I have Mally's clay field. Um, it's a box of clay, and she's going to tell us more about how we do it. There's also a bucket of water and some sponges. Um, she's going to talk to us more about this clay field and the path that got her there and what she does with it. It's um, this form of art therapy is common in, more common in Europe and it, she is one of the pioneers bringing it to the United States so we're really I'm really excited that she's sharing this information with us so Melly tell me more about what we have in front of us and what we're doing and how you got here okay so um, let's start with how I got here okay um, after grad school um, still working with clay un, uh, realizing that um, my own emotional work was coming up and I was kind of trying to figure out the connection. You know, you, um, you're drawn to a material. Like, I was so drawn to clay. I've been so passionate about clay. And what I didn't realize was it was really helping me with my life. <laughs> you know, like, I, and that's why I was so drawn yeah. to it. Um, and then I found this book. 
And this book really, again, game changer. So this book was written by Cornelia Elbrecht. Trauma Healing at the Clay Field. Yeah. And I read about four pages into this book, and I immediately knew that this was the thing that I was searching for. Um, so I contacted the author immediately, <laughs> and it turned out that she was having a workshop. Um, it was her first international workshop to teach people how to do this. And I thought, I have to go. Am I qualified? Can I do this? <laughs> but, but I actually... Um, I did. I, I uprooted myself, and I went to Malta. You know, I didn't even know where Malta was before <laughs> I went there, but, but um, there was a group of about 15 of us from all over the world. And Cornelia herself, she's a German woman, but she is living in Australia. And so she's been doing this work um, for decades. She's been working with a man called Hans, Heinz Duser. Can wow, say that's that a right. mouthful. I know, right? <laughs> Hard to say. So he's a German man who kind of developed this, and um, so she wanted to kind of pass it on. He only spoke German, so she really wanted to bring it to the Western world, and that's what she's doing right now. Um, she's really doing uh, workshops, and she's doing TED Talks and things like that. So it's really, this is something that's growing, and it's really valuable. Like, so basically what we're going to do and what this is about <laughs> is um, you're going to put your hands in the in the field, and so Sorry, yeah, go ahead and do yeah, that. go ahead and do that. <laughs> and when you do this, like what we do is we work through with the with the clients. You know, um, I'll just kind of get you in a place where you're comfortable. You know, your feet are on the ground. See, so your feet are not on the ground. Put your feet on I'm the sure ground. I'm sure my feet don't necessarily <laughs> touch the ground. <laughs> um, and so, essentially, it's a, it's a way to process the world through your hands, not hmm. your head. You know, we're so mental. So is it okay if I dig my fingers in there while you're talking? Yeah, go ahead. So, go ahead. you guys, I love clay. <laughs> and this is, you're using a really creamy clay here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason we use the creamy clay because it's, um, it just gives you that, the sensory motor experience. So basically you're working with your haptic perception. Your hands are so smart. Mm. They are smarter than your head, if you can believe it. And they will actually guide you through this material if you can let go of the idea that I need to make a thing. This isn't about making a thing. It's really about just feeling. So we sensing. sometimes talk about in clay product versus process. So this is all process, yes. no product. In the end, the clay field goes home, Mally takes it back, and she spins it out for the next person. So, but it's the experience and what you feel and what you do as yeah. you're doing it. Yep. And, and, um, and I don't know, you know, we talked about this before because I'm, I work with clay all the time. But even for me, just doing this, this very smooth, flat surface is so intriguing. I think there's something really interesting about a flat surface of clay. Everybody wants to poke their hands in it. <laughs> what like, it basically is, is that like, you have to go through a destruction process to get to the creation process. So this is really like a metaphor for our lives, essentially. <laughs> you know, like we build these structures, these mental um, images, these, these rules, these things that we need to live by. We have these experiences, and this is a way to kind of work through. And you're doing it through your body. So again, it's not your mind, you know. So you can actually add some water to that if you want. Would you like a oh, little water? Oh yes. Yeah. So so it's just so there's a little water in these there. These wonderful little clay sponges that I'm very fond of. So I'm gonna squeeze a little water in there and just I can just move it around. Yeah, just move so it around. And no, you can. There's do, no real right or wrong. There is no right or wrong. <laughs> there's no there's no judgment. There's nothing about this. It's really just how your hands are moving into the clay. And what, when you're working with different clients, what are some of the things that they kind of end up with as a sort of end result? I mean, is there other people that are trying to make things, or do they try to drive their hands around? What happens? It's, you know, it, it's, it's so different for each person. It's completely different. So see how you're just kind of doing this, like you're sensing, you're feeling, mm -hmm. you're really embracing this clay. Your palms are down there. So sometimes people don't 
they don't feel comfortable. They're a little nervous about, like, how do I approach this? And so it's really kind of how they approach everything. So you, I can see, you're very sensuous. But I know this about you because I've known you, my, you know, a long time. You know, but other people might, like, poke at it tentatively. You know, you can dig in and right. you can rip right. through it and you can just... It's funny, I don't like, have this desire to tear into it. I want to just smooth You just want it. to feel the skin. And so I, this is yeah. skin sense is and what I they call And I love this. You know, I've talked about that sense of the, the slip on your hands and I, I love that and um, the softness of it. And... And even though I work in clay all the time, like this experience, just doing this is so satisfying and, and, um, yeah, it's, it's very compelling. Like I, this is really a lovely experience. It's amazing because <laughs> sometimes, um, people are like, they're afraid of this experience, you know, and this is a way for them to get the sense. It's a, um, it's like a whole body thing. So when you feel it, there's a, just a calm. You know, there's an ease about this. You know, it's it's a like a life approach. Say something comes up and you and you don't want to deal with it. You might actually be pushing it away mm. in the clay field. That's how that would manifest. Is you would actually be pushing it. That's interesting because as you were saying that, I found you know I, I stuck my finger in, yeah. and then I thought, no, I don't want to make that mark on it. I want to I want to smooth that out. So I was wondering, like that must like maybe internally says something about me psychologically. Like I don't want to make a mark in it. I don't want to dig it. I don't want to dig too deep. You know, I was thinking about like maybe that's something. Well, we'll, ex we'll explore that later. <laughs> it's right. We'll do this in private. <laughs> So, but that is kind of how the approach, what the yeah. approach is. And this is why it's so powerful because your body is smarter than, you know, your head. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't think so because we get so stuck in our heads. This is a way to get you out of your head and really feeling the world. Like, so say if you had an experience that didn't make you feel safe, you might not feel safe in the field and that's how it would manifest, but you could work your way through it at your own pace, at your own level. You know, some people don't even want to touch the clay. You know, and it's a, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's just about approaching and finding safety and resolution. And when you're working with clients, do, is there much dialogue or is it, no, it's a quiet No, process. it's a very quiet thing. In fact, actually, when I'm working with clients, I have them close their eyes. Adult clients. Mm -hmm. You know, children are very different. Children have a whole other experience. Um, and I'm really excited to work with both adults and kids. But when you have your eyes closed, you really can get into your hands. You really get into that. It's called a felt sense. And this is where you might feel a sense of, like, there's danger here. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid of this. And you're like, it's clay. Why am I afraid of this? <laughs> but it's not just clay. It's, it's, it's some of the it's things more. that are coming up. And so if you can find a way to find resolution and peace then you actually find resolution and peace in your life. That's really wonderful work that you're doing. How exciting. Yeah. And um, so um, I'm going to just say if you're interested in working with Mally and Clayfield um, or taking classes at Hollowell Clayworks, either way, how do people find you? What's the best place? Um, HollowellClayworks.me is the best place to find me. I'm on right on the main street in Hollowell. And um, I'm accessible to, to a lot of, you know, from a diff lot of different areas. And do you have a website? I do. I do. So HollowellClayworks.me is the website. Okay. Um, so that's probably the best way to contact me and, and maybe find out a little more information. And you have information about, about your clay field work as well as your classes and I your do. pottery, I assume. I do. So Melly's a, Melly's a very busy woman. She has lots to, to offer. And, um, and I definitely suggest if trying Clayfield, if you want to work through some uh, emotional processes, this is already very satisfying, interesting work. And if you're in the Augusta, more up in the Hollow Augusta area and you can't come to Neighborhood Clay to take classes, then definitely go to Mally because we, we kind of like to share our um, students and, sure. and um, offer different workshops. So definitely explore that. So I'm going to say thank you. <laughs> I did want to say one more thing. Yeah, Is that okay? Yeah, um, absolutely. So 
one of the things not, I not only work with adults but I work with kids because there's so much going on right now with children and they're having trouble regulating their emotions and that kind of work and so one of the things I want to do is to be able to go into schools or have the school kids come to me which they already some of them already are um, to help them kind of in a nonverbal way you know access some of this stuff and gain some skills it's great for people with PTSD it's great for people who just are non you know they don't want to talk or maybe they can't even talk about it it's so big that they can't talk about it and this is just a fantastic way to do it oh great yeah yeah great so. thank you Mally yeah Thanks thank for you joining us <laughs> thank you and join us next time on the neighborhood Potter